I'm going to hold you to yours. So John is going to start, and we'll hold his to his 10 to 15 minute presentation here. We'll just give I, I will, the spotlight. I think I'll be able to do it quicker than that. Well, you take the spotlight off me, actually, because the first thing I want to do is introduce a practice that I've taken up in all my meetings. Um, um, and I want to, I'm back in gallery view, and I invite you all to go to gallery view as well in order to have a good look at who's on here tonight. Um, and in a hybrid meeting, what I do is I also show the Zoom to the room and the room to the Zoom and ask them just to, you know, because the first thing my wife asked me when I come home from a meeting is, well, who was there? Well, that's the social aspect of it. Who was there? So it uh, does us good to uh, acknowledge that and get us, get us out of the, you know, the TV watching and realize we are dealing with our friends and colleagues and we're all here on screen together. Um, that's another, I'm gonna, I have a couple of things I want to talk about um, after here's looking at you. Um, La Bruce alluded to last month, uh, last month I, f I had an idea, I was left with doing it myself because Bruce and Jim were both off, they're my usual co-hosts uh, because of lightning, stri lightning storm, um, I had Dennis on and Dennis is perfectly capable of being co-host co as well, but I sort of arrogantly said, oh I can handle this, well I can't handle this, I can handle a coffee hour of 30 or 40 people because they're all trained to use raise hand and they're used to taking turns. But you lot, you know, everybody wants to talk at once and nobody wants to stop talking. And it's very hard to manage the screen and manage the Zoom and manage the, the meeting all at the same time. So you got to have co-hosts. And right now there are three co-hosts with, with us here tonight uh, for that very reason. Um, and so after the fail last week, last month, the relying on the co-host to save to help with the meeting, at our club meeting, I had terrible audio problems, and the co-hosts were who saved my butt. They sent me texts. I couldn't uh, get my, uh, the batteries died, and what I was using to monitor audio, it was a hybrid club meeting, and I got texts all through the meeting from Jim and from Bruce, who uh, said, your, your audio's too low, or this audio's volume's way too high, and they just flash on my screen, and I can respond to those. Uh, and similarly, if the if we get a thunder, thunderstorm here tonight and I get knocked off as the meeting host, the host duties will devolve to one of the co-hosts as opposed to some random member. So it's a very important good practice to have an off-site co-host for every meeting, um, someone who can both take over for you and step in with you and help, help control the unruly mob. I uh, can't emphasize that strongly enough. The times when we have not done it have been fails, and the times when we have have been successes. Because of this forum earlier in the spring, and the, we had we I we realized we have two kinds of club leaders. We have club leaders who are into the tech and they're good at it, and they got no problem figuring it out and working through it. But we also have non-tech club leaders who say things to us like, "Well, what's the simplest Zoom setup, and how do I learn this?" And I got enough of that this spring so that I made a 10 video, I set out to make one video and it turned into 10 short videos on different topics which are all posted on the AAW site that I mean as tutorials for non-tech club leaders who have to step into this. I know that all you guys who are tech experts will consider them silly and I don't care um, because I'm, what I'm after is establishing a, a way for club leaders to learn how to do this. And I believe the way to do it is to set up a simple one camera setup and a simple one camera zoom setup and play with it. And if you do that, you can learn this and conquer it. And if you don't do that, it'll be re remain an opaque mystery till the end of time. So, so if you, I will send in the chat from this a link to the playlists where those videos are. I have also created playlists on my channel for the past club presentations from this forum and also for the past open forum. So all those videos are both available on the AAW Chapter Leadership Forum and they're organized in playlists on my own YouTube channel. And I'll put out all that information in the, in the, in the next follow-up email. Um, that... Part of this, part of the, you know, the reason, okay, why did, why did we do this? Well, uh, I frankly got tired of waiting for the AA board to do anything. Uh, the board has, has been silent on this whole point. Um, Baker recently told me that uh, the board had decided to form an AV committee, and he's tasked with doing that, and I'm very glad to see that begin to happen because there's a lot of functions here that we're trying to do as a group of club leaders that really belong with the board, uh, keeping of the records, keeping of the archive, keeping of the keeping of the uh, mailing list, developing best practices, developing tutorials and teaching materials. This really is all a board function. And that leads me to the last point I want to make. Well, I have two other points I want to make. Uh, one of the last points I want to make is uh, in 
in pushing on this whole problem, we have persuaded the Mid-Atlantic Symposium to enable a hybrid component. And the uh, Lancaster Coffee Hour group is going to do that. We're going to try and go to the Mid-Atlantic Symposium and deliver five, six hours of Zoom that does not include demos. Um, nobody wants to allow the demos to go out on the Zoom. They're afraid that people won't attend the event. And I get that. Uh, but I think there's a lot in the event that we can do on Zoom. We're going to do the vendors, we're going to do the trade show, we're going to do the opening reception and intros, and we're going to do the luncheon. We'll have a team of about four people with a mobile Zoom cart around the event, and uh, I will have more to say about that and more to show you about that in coming weeks or coming months. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a breakthrough. We're, what we're hoping to do is establish a bit of a paradigm of, you know, here's a way you can do it. It doesn't mean it's the only way, but it's a way that works. To, to enable a hybrid component for regional events and national events. The reason for that, of course, is everybody wants to be there and do the demos if you can and see the demos and see everything if you can, but sometimes you just can't for whatever reason. It might be health, it might be other commitments, it might be it's too, too expensive, it's too far, all kinds of reasons. So we believe, we've come to believe that there's a whole audience that AAW events have not been reaching of people who would like to be there will enjoy a Zoom participation at a, low, at a different, at a lower price, uh, recognizing that it's not a substitute for being there, it's something new that we're going to try and create. Uh, and a, a way, it be, can become a way of involving more people. Um, that brings me to the final part of this. Uh, one of our club members asked me this morning, you know, are there any of these guys running for the board that we should pay attention to? And I said, I don't know. And so I went and read all the six, six bios that are out there on the AAW site. I noticed that one, Sally Burnett, um, has LIRD experience and wrote to that, but none of the other five mentioned anything about hybrid meetings. So I wrote to them and I said, hey, what about it? And I posed four questions to them, invited them to come on here for a minute or two and to give us an written answers to the questions if they'd like to. Um, and two did give me written answers, which I'll also circulate. And uh, one is here. He's been a regular on, on this forum. And since he's here and since he's been paying attention, I would uh, I would go for giving him a couple of minutes to tell us what he thinks about hybrid meetings and what the board ought to be doing. Ron, you want to go for it? Sure. And thanks for the opportunity. And absolutely don't want this to be a campaign speech or anything like that. But we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Basically, my philosophy with this hybrid meeting in the national symposium is they got to figure out a way to create enough value at the on-site to get everybody there. But if they can't be there, I look at the worldwide uh, Wood Turners uh, hybrid they had last year or their online they had last year, which was a phenomenal success. Why can't the AAW embrace that and do both, have the live in-person as well as the hybrid? Because absolutely, you know, you don't know about the health issues that somebody may have, but more importantly, the cost. It's getting very, very expensive to go to a national symposium or even the regional ones. So to embrace that, the AAW ought to be taking the lead on this without a so doubt. So if you, if you get on the board, you'll be an advocate for hybrid meetings, will you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what I like is the idea that you can share uh, sister clubs. We could be uh, have a meeting here in North Dakota and share it with somebody clear down there in Florida in the middle of winter and show them, what snow really looks like, but at the same time, we can take advantage of some of the demonstrators and just get some of that cross fertilization that we just don't have right now. And to me, this forum is a great way to do that in the hybrid meetings there. You asked the question, have we done hybrid meetings? Absolutely. Um, we did them out in my shop, obviously during COVID. Up here in North Dakota, we didn't have a strict lockdown. So we kind of started out as a hybrid. We had a lot of members that would come to my shop. At the same time, we'd be putting it out on Zoom. Very simplistic, not a lot of high tech, you know, as we found trying so, to go with high tech so, and Zoom and all that, the audience. So if, you're, so if you're on the board, you're gonna be a voice for uh, supporting clubs who uh, wanna have hybrid meetings. Am I hearing you right? Yes. That's what Absolutely. we wanted to hear. See Rick Baker has a hand up. You want to say something, Rick? Well, just be before we go to Rick, is there anybody else who's a board candidate on the screen right now? We should give them the, a minute or two if they're here. There was another fellow who said he might show, and he, I, I'm not sure if he is. I don't know these guys, so okay, I don't see anybody saying they're that other person. Okay, Baker. 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to comment, um, uh, and and I'm glad to hear that uh, um, that uh, Ron's supporting us um, with uh, uh, the online stuff. Um, our biggest problem uh, for the board is getting people that will volunteer to do this. That's our our, our big limiting factor is the the number of people that it takes to do an online. And each room that we do requires three or four people. And we have a hard time getting a single videographer in there for the live events. So anybody that's interested in that, get in touch with me. Uh, Cause that, that is, it's so important that we, we get those people that that'll, that'll stop us from doing it. If we can't get the people. Well, so Rick, what's the progress towards forming your committee? Uh, I've got a board meeting uh, this week to finalize it. Have you got a mission statement worked out? We have something worked out, yes. Okay. Any other questions for Rick about this topic? All right. I want to thank you, Rick, also for your support in the, in the uh, Mid-Atlantic Initiative. We actually did a Zoom test at the convention center last week with my mobile Zoom cart and Rick and Jim Bowman and uh, Doug Reeser and my wife. And we established that we can establish a hotspot and establish a Zoom link from all of the meeting spaces at the Marriott that is stable and seems to be very stable, workable. So technically we can do this. Now are we smart enough to pull it off?